Welcome to a special edition of Cronkite News Recycling Reductions. I'm Jennifer Alvarez. And I'm Scotty Gange. Tonight, we're taking an in-depth look to changes to recycling happening across Arizona, including service reductions and garbage rate increases. Also, why it's happening, what changes are coming, and what you can do. And we're giving you the chance to participate by taking our live news quiz. So grab your phone right now and play along. We'll be asking 10 recycling quiz questions throughout the show so you can test your knowledge. Just type this URL into your phone to get ready. Vote.cronkite.live. That's vote.cronkite.live. We'll start our news quiz in just a minute. But first, let's catch you up on the latest. Right now, the city of Phoenix is considering increasing rates for recycling or even eliminating the services. That's because it's getting too costly to keep the programs going. Now, other cities across the state have already reduced recycling services or cut them entirely. Last week, the Public Works Department for Phoenix proposed four rate hike options. Just to keep recycling services would require a 24% increase in service rates. The other proposals all included rate hikes, but not by as much. Some would involve reducing recycling to every other week or eliminating composting services. Now it's your turn. Grab your phone and go to vote.cronkite.live and join us for our recycling quiz. We'll have 10 questions during our coverage, so again, you can test your knowledge. For each question, you'll have 15 seconds to decide, then we'll display the correct answer. So the first question is, what is the percent of total waste recycled in the U.S. in 2017? The options are 13%, 21%, or 35%. You can cast your vote right now. So how did we end up in this recycling crisis? While you vote, Jordan Evans will explain. The story of recycling in America seems on the surface like a success. And according to the EPA, the percent of waste that Americans recycle has grown consistently and dramatically from just 6% in 1960 to double digits by 1980 and then tripling by the year 2000. In 2017, we recycled nearly one third of our waste. However, the economics of recycling have changed dramatically in the past two years. And that's the subject of our second question in the news quiz. Where has most of the recycling from Phoenix gone? So let's talk about the economics of recycling and how they have changed in the past two years. China once took 60 to 70 percent of the recycling from Phoenix, and they paid well for it, too. In fact, the city of Tempe made over half a million dollars off of their recycling. But now, since January 2018, China has significantly reduced the waste it accepts and the rates it pays. In Phoenix, take a look at how much the revenue from recycling has plunged in the past few years, from $13 million all the way down to $3 million. Smaller communities in Arizona have been among hit the hardest, and that's why I went to the city of Surprise, where changes to recycling in this city may preview what lies ahead for Phoenix. So he'll get that material and he'll push it back and up. When you recycle and items could... such as plastic water bottles and aluminum cans, they end up here at recycling plants across the valley. But not everything you put in your recycling bin makes it into these bales. Instead, they're ending up here. The problem is more with people putting too much waste in, in their direction. Pretty much of all plastics ever created, only about 9% has truly been recycled. And most of it ends up in the landfills. It's meant to last a long time, it's durable, it's inexpensive. So that's why it's created it's on you know, such a massive scale and it's just been increasing since the 1950s. So when non-recyclable materials are fed into this facility, it comes at a cost because all of your items are sorted manually. Contamination is absolutely a problem. So, so we as residents are contributing to this grand challenge in recycling right Right now. Contamination is enough of a problem that it's not only causing us to pay, but causing us to pay a lot. As of August, Surprise decided to suspend its program because of this reason. But before that, the cost of recycling was already getting expensive when China imposed bans on plastic waste in 2018. A recent study published in Science Advances says nearly half of all of the imported plastic waste globally since 1988 will be displaced by 2030. That's equivalent to about 111 million metric tons. They're expecting to get this, you know, this delivery of plastic and they get a bunch of trash mixed in, it, it becomes a problem. And, and why would they want to keep buying it if then it takes extra manpower and extra hours to be able to separate all that stuff out and then move on with the recycling process. What was one problem has now evolved into two. Because China was receiving contaminated plastic waste, this has now created a much larger surplus here domestically. 
it, it's hard to argue with economics for some cities and towns that are small that don't have resources. It's a big bite out of the budget now. We used to make about $600,000 off of our recycling, and now we lose about $500,000. It's, it's a million dollar swing. Lauren Kuby with the city of Tempe says the city is struggling to keep its recycling program alive. So far, four cities in Arizona have suspended their programs completely, and several others are making huge cuts. You know, one of the advantages of pushing pause, like what we did, um, is this grabbed residents' attention. And so on social media and, and in person, residents are saying, what can we do to get recycling back? What can we do to make it work? So for now, residents of Surprise can drop off their recycling at the Northwest Regional Landfill on Saturday mornings. And that's where it will be processed in a material recovery facility. Gent says until cost-effective solutions are identified, check with your city's website for information on what you can and cannot go in your curbside bin. If I could explain three things, it's uh, don't throw any, any plastic bags or any wrappables, we call them. Um, if you are using a recycling container, make sure that you put your recyclables in loose and uh, try to use the internet to educate yourself on uh, the items that are, are, are best being recycled right now. In Surprise, Arizona, Jordan Evans, Cronkite News. Contamination increases the cost of recycling and reduces the total amount of waste that can be reused. And that brings us to our next question in the news quiz. Question three, what is the annual estimated extra cost to sort contaminated recycling in Phoenix? Is it $100,000, $500,000, or $1 million? Cast your vote now at vote.cronkite.live. Melanie Porter is joining us now to show us some of the most important do's and don'ts when it comes to sorting your recycling correctly. The City of Phoenix estimates that contaminated recycling costs an extra $1 million a year in sorting time, mostly due to plastic bags like these, which can't be recycled. And in general, don't put your recyclables in a plastic bag in your bin. Other ways we contaminate our recycling is with boxes that have food left in them, like this pizza box. And cereal boxes can be recycled, but their plastic liners cannot. Cardboard boxes can be recycled if they're free of food, but they do need to be broken down before you recycle. And all that junk mail you get can be recycled. The general rule for paper, if you can rip it, you can recycle it. Glass cans and jars can be recycled, but make sure the tops are removed. Aluminum cans and bottles can also be recycled, as well as juice and milk cartons, and hard plastic bottles. Sorting your recycling accurately is the biggest thing you can do to keep recycling costs down and maximize what gets reused. In Phoenix, I'm Melanie Porter, Cronkite News. These guidelines are from the city of Phoenix, so check your local services to get the exact rules where you live. Now let's move on to the next question in our news quiz. Food waste makes up the largest share of waste in U.S. landfills. But what's the second largest source? Is it plastics, paper, or metal? Just go to vote.cronkite.live to cast your vote again. That's vote.cronkite.live. Here are four things you can do to help recycling efforts. First, experts say the best strategy is to reduce and reuse as much as you can. So, use reusable shopping bags to avoid plastic bags. Second, buy used or reusable items when you can. Third, look for products that use less packaging. And finally, number four, when you do recycle, sort carefully. And that brings us to our final question in the news quiz. The increase in plastic waste in the U.S. since 1990. Is it 38%, 71%, or 106%? Cast your vote now. So do you know that now plas plastics now make up the second largest form of waste at landfills? But as Jordan Elder reports, researchers may have quite the solution. She shows us how juice from Arizona's very own prickly pear cactus could play a major role in combating the problem. It might seem hard to believe, but the future of these plastic bags might lie in prickly pear cactuses. America wastes a lot of plastic, and especially at the grocery store. Shoppers use almost one plastic bag per resident per day. And it's not just these plastic bags, it's bottles too. In 2015, Americans purchased about 346 bottles per person. That's almost a bottle a day. And this problem keeps growing. Less than one-fifth of all plastic is recycled globally. But 
there might be a new recipe to solve this plastic problem. Engineers in Mexico are beta testing a new chemical formula with cactus juice as the main ingredient. It was created by Sandra Pasco Ortiz, a chemical engineering professor at the University of the Valley of Atemajac in Zapopan. Juice is extracted from the cactus and mixed with additives that make it feel more like the plastic bags we're used to. Then it gets rolled out and dried. The whole process takes about 10 days. These cactus juice bags take two or three months to break down in soil and only a week if they're put in water or compost. Normal plastic bags may take centuries to decompose. Prickly pears are all over Arizona, so these bags could potentially be produced right here if the technology takes off. Several companies are interested in collaborating with Ortiz, who has already filed for a patent for this technology. For now, keep your reusable bags handy, but prickly pear plastic could make its way to your grocery store in the coming years. So what's next? As we told you earlier, there are four proposals on the table that would bring big changes for trash and recycling in the city of Phoenix. They include rate increases as well as recycling service reductions. The city plans to hold 10 open hearings to gather public input. Cronkite News will have continuing coverage of the recycling hearings as they happen. So be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter and find us online at cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Also, our public media partners here in Arizona and in California have a series of in-depth stories on the promises and failures of recycling programs across the western U.S. You can find that coverage and more sustainability stories on ElementalReports.com.